Welcome to the Laurent Collective Podcast, where we go deeper than just surface talk. Each week, we'll explore everything from family, business, creativity, culture, and faith. To make sure not to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and hop on to Instagram at Laurent Collective to chat with us about this episode. Does the idea of classroom valentines stress you out? Do your kids want to send a special message to a loved one? We've made it easy for you this year to help your kids send love to others for Valentine's Day. At LaurentCollective.com, we have instant downloads that you can print at home. Each download includes a sheet of six smaller cards for classroom valentines, the ability to print a 5x7 card, and a coloring sheet with the artwork for kids to customize and give to others. Help your kids spread the love to others at LaurentCollective.com. Search under Valentine's Day and click cards. Hello. Hello, hello. Good to be with you guys this week. Yeah. Uh, this week, we thought we would talk about something a bit, I don't know, I guess it's a little bit different, um, but we thought we would talk about how we get our kids to help around the house. Yeah, Um, because that's so easy. It's not easy. So, you know, um, I know (laughs) some of you listening may be like, well, I'm tuning out because I don't have kids and stuff like this. But this, this, some of this might apply to like if you have housemates and things um, and that type of thing. Um, Or if you're in America. So there's probably some things to grab. What was that? I said, or if you're in America. Roommates. Roommates, yes. Sorry. We'll we'll do both lingos. Yeah. Um, I think uh, for us, this has been something we have obviously been experimenting for lots of years. Our older son yeah, is definitely. coming on 15 in a couple of weeks. Um, and I feel like we have finally, it's taken 15 years. We have finally found something that works. And so we <laughs> thought we would share it. Um, and again, you could tweak this and everything like that for your family and that kind of thing. But um, in, in this, and we'll talk throughout this about how this, this does ebb and flow a little bit different depending on the ages of your children yeah. um, and that kind of thing. Well, and so. I think a lot of this stuff that we're going to talk about, I think has brought up, at least for us, because our oldest is going to be 15 soon. Like we always talk about with him, you know, what are some of these life skills that <laughs> we need to launch you out with properly, um, which has, you know, kind of fallen into some of these categories that we're going to talk about a little bit, but Again, it's, yeah, yeah, it'll be, yeah, it's, you know, we try our best and we continue to tweak and and change and things like that. But some of this stuff is seemed to be working. Yeah. So first of all, I thought uh, it's good to start with like why we think it's important for our kids to help around the house. Mm -hmm, Um, And for us, the way we have always, always, even on all the different times that we have like frames this and tried different things we've always said we are a family team Mm -hmm. like this is not just a mom and dad runs the show and does everything in the house like you are the ones that are causing some of the mess you are the ones that eat here you are the ones that live here as well and so we are a family team and when you're on a team it's not just one person that's doing things sure you may have a captain so fine we might be Mm -hmm. the captains helping direct things um but we are not the ones doing everything because you're also living in the space and that kind of thing. Um, right. And so it takes all of us to mm-hmm. keep this space and this house functioning and running smoothly and that kind of thing. And that if we're not all on a team together doing that, that like things are going to fall through the cracks and that kind of thing. And it's more stressful for other people. And that's, that's not well, yeah. and you know, think, what it needs to be. I think it's just, again, it's, it's really good for then the kids, our kids to see, that mommy's not the only one just doing things or daddy's not the one that's always just doing everything you know everyone's helping out and and playing their part and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and and so again it's not they're not you know we're trying to set an example where again everybody has a role to play and it's not it just doesn't fall on one person um in that way so yeah i think that's that's like a big why for us and i think (laughs) All of us have probably had, um, you know, if you did in in university or whenever it was, have lived with somebody that you realize, like, they don't even know how to do some of the basic things around the house. For various reasons, they don't know how to do that. Um, I think as we are getting closer to launching one child out of the house, 
thinking through that and thinking, mm-hmm. oh gosh, like if he does live with other people, I don't want him to be that person. Oh, like he totally. needs to know how to do some things um, and that kind of thing. So I think it's, again, like you said, it's life skills. Like mm-hmm. some things you just need to know how to do um, depending on your situation, whether you know how, whether you are doing them or not. Like, you know, I think it's funny. Um, it, there were so many articles here in London about people who had had like hired help to do a lot of the life things around the house and oh, then when right. covid happened those people couldn't come to their house and yeah. so then they suddenly needed to know or and didn't actually like the articles were there actually you know entertaining as they were like i don't i don't know how to do the laundry and that kind of thing and so <laughs> again like maybe they'll be in a situation where they can have help doing all the different things great but like there's going to be con- times where they need to know how to do it so you know whatever the situation is i think we feel like these are good life skills as well. But the yeah. more important thing for us, I mean, life skills, yes, important, but is more the fact that like you live in a house and you take ownership as it as well. It's not just one person or two people's responsibility, right? No matter your age, we'll get into a little bit more how we handle the age thing. Um, sure. Because obviously, I mean, clearly, if you have a child that can't even crawl or and that kind of thing, like there, this does not apply to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And nor do we do those things. Um, I will say once our kids were toddlers, they helped in some manner. Now, Mm -hmm. it may not have been, you know, but we have pictures of our kids doing different things around the house and helping at that age. Um, So we'll get into that a little bit more. But first, we thought we would talk about, like, what are some opportunities that there may be in your house? Um, What are the types of things that they can help with? We don't like to call them chores because I don't know. I mean, that's up to you. But for yeah, terminology us, is way up to you. Um, yeah. And now that I'm saying that, I'm like, oh, does our list upstairs say chores? I think it says opportunities, um, like opportunities <laughs> for you to help or something like that. Because the chores thing just has like a negative connotation to it. So we don't call it that. Yeah. Um, we just say like, this is what makes the house function. Yeah. These are your responsibilities. I think it says role. responsibilities. Yeah, this is your role today. Yeah, basically. these are your responsibilities. So we have tried everything <laughs> when it comes yeah. to how we divide out the things in the house. Um, We have one child that, you know, is always like, well, that's not fair. I have more. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think initially we tried to work it out where, okay, these are the things that needed to happen today in the house. And somebody needs to volunteer to do them. And we tried that for a really long time. And you could probably imagine how many people volunteered. <laughs> well, it wasn't even volunteering. They just they wanted to volunteer for the same thing the, or the simple thing, or they yeah. all wanted to do the one simple thing and no one else wanted to do the two or three other things that were on That's the list. More difficult. So it just didn't really work out very well no. most evenings or most afternoons that kind of thing so. exactly and so then we tried a um we we've tried variations of like you know i'm using the word chore now but a chore chart where it was like here are your things and you have to check we tried one where it was here are your things and they have to be done within the week but then we realized oh like dishes are every day like certain yeah. so there's certain activities that are every day and there are certain activities that are like once a week or a mm-hmm. couple times a week and things like that and so as we realized this it wasn't for our kids at least and yes we have um just remind you on ages we have an almost 15 year old we have an 11 year old and we have a seven year old but we have done this method for probably the past three years or so mm-hmm. so even when veda was around four, with some tweaks here and there with some tweaks yeah. when she was around four she started to get this um and so we have made a chart that uh, i say chart whatever a piece of paper that we have printed out and it's on our fridge and basically it has each day of the week listed so it's like monday tuesday wednesday if you get the picture i do have the weekend clumped together so it's a saturday and sunday yeah. um and on that it has each kid And then it has the responsibilities for that day. Mm -hmm. So then that prevents you. Because before it was like dishes. And we'd all be like, who did dishes last night? And everyone would be like, I did. No, I did. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, you have that whole thing. Well, now Or they all wanted to go, oh, well, I want to sweep tonight. They all want to sweep tonight. And so, like we were saying, it's just, it didn't work. It didn't work. And so this was like, clearly... This child has dishes on Monday. This child has dishes on Tuesday. We'll get into like what happens if they're not here and all that stuff. But but this is like it's it's very clearly laid out. So there's no I mean, it's our thing was I'm so sick. Like we're trying to be a family team and now you're fighting over the things that <laughs> right. you want to help with or that you saying you did yesterday and that kind of thing. Um, 
So we basically, you know, Pat and I figured out what are all the tasks in our house that need to be done um, and figured those out. And so basically we have on those days, like I just said, dishes, it's an everyday dishes occurrence. One, yeah. um, currently we say our kids, well, in the summer and stuff like that, dishes means you have it all day. So you're responsible for lunch and breakfast and stuff like that. Yeah. During the home. school year, we limit it. Well, they're not home during lunch, first of all. Breakfast, they're supposed to, everyone is supposed to be responsible for their own stuff at breakfast time. We're still working that's, on that. I one. was going to say, that's usually a hit or miss with that. Uh, one. That's a hit or miss. We're still working on that one. But dinner, dishes, evening dishes, someone's responsibility for. Um, currently, um, you know, this is where you can divide dishes, not divide them, but like you can say, you know, you're just sticking them in the dishwasher or you're also doing anything that needs to be hand done. Our kids right now just stick in the dishwasher. Age well, they rinse and then put they it in the dishwasher. They rinse and stick in the yeah. dishwasher, scrape food off, whatever it may be. Um, we're working up to them doing the hand washing and stuff like that. Um, and some of that is, is, and it's hard because, uh, you do have to teach them how to do properly, but you also have to remember like they are helping, but you don't want to have to go back and do it again yourself. So, you know, depending on the dishwasher you have, it may be they have to completely rinse the plate off. You just have to tell them that and show them that, Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of thing. And so it's, it's, it's learning and being patient. And sometimes, you know, when our kids have done the hand dishes, we're like, oh, that's not clean. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of thing. But again, it's just like each step of the way. Um, yeah. Or learning. like, you know, the difference with, for example, the difference though to between kids, mm-hmm. you know, with Zane, you know, we expect him to know what he's doing, do it himself. Like we don't have to sit over his shoulder kind of thing. Where with Veda, if it's Veda's turn to do the dishes that night, um, you know, for her, you know, one of us is usually with her yeah. with it. So we're helping her understand. Well, I mean, okay. she can barely even go from the sink to the dishwasher yeah, without yeah. reaching So it. a lot of times she's the one that's rinsing <laughs> the and then maybe mom, you know, I or, or Maya will help with put that, it yeah. in the dishwasher or she'll do the vice versa. Some, you know, one of us will rinse it and then she'll help us put it where it needs to be and stuff like that. So, But again, she's learning that skill for when she's a little bit older and she can yeah. be both at the sink and, you know, at that and that kind of thing. So, so yeah, so we have the daily, we have somebody's on dishes mm-hmm. and then daily someone is sweeping. Now this would look different again for your house and whatever daily things you have. So mm-hmm. sweeping, what we mean is like they take a broom and we have wood floors. And so, um, it's like sweep, especially underneath where they eat breakfast, mm-hmm. the kitchen and underneath the kitchen table. I'm not, we're not saying go sweep the whole floor, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. whole, you know, area, but just those key areas. Um, so somebody's on that. Now, obviously we have three kids and there are seven days a week. And so that doesn't equally mean that everyone has <laughs> everybody... the same amount of doing dishes per week. But what we've tried our best to do, um, is, uh, well, first of all, the division of labor, like by age so Mm -hmm. you know our oldest does have more responsibility and we'll explain why in a little bit um and so he may have things a little bit more um than others but we do try we try to go like every other day who's doing dishes and that kind of thing they still have to do them on the weekends too that's still a Mm -hmm. thing and on the weekends we just say on saturday it's this person on sunday it's this person when it comes to those things yeah but then we also looked at the things that weekly need done um and just an example again everybody's house is different and so this would be you know div, you know pick up room is i forgot that's another daily thing too mm-hmm. um we're not like our kids have different kinds of beds a little bit so we're not all like you have to make your bed but we do say once a week at least if not twice a week up, you need to straighten up your reset, bed reset in a sense <laughs> reset yeah exactly um yeah we personally make we, our own bed we we have one child who has nothing on his bed <laughs> like if he's there's he's, really no making like it because there's nothing a to duvet make. and maybe two pillows and <laughs> that's about it <laughs> then the other one you can barely see the bed mm-hmm. and then there's, there's an, the other one is like in the middle in between yeah it's just funny so um so we have that but then our weekly things are things like vacuuming or hoovering if you're here um cleaning bathrooms um really like room pickups that kind of thing overall cleaning um you know it might be like wiping windows or something like that like there's dusting dusting um that kind of stuff and so those things we don't say 
like you need to do them all on one day. Um, we have like, I know one of Zane's tasks is on like a Tuesday night or something he's supposed to take. And we have this, anything you can do to make it easier for kids. So mm -hmm. for the dusting, if I were to just hand him like a rag or some, I, I don't know, if I were to hand him something, he'd probably be like, whatever. Um, but we have like this dusting mitt and for whatever the reasons, the, yeah, it's like a glove the kids that they put on enjoy just, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anything you can find that makes it a little bit easier is fine. Um, and so he will go around and like dust the top floor. So that's like our living space and things like that. Jude later in the week has the dust all the bedrooms kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And here is where we need to just say like, it's probably not going to be done to your per your like level, mm -hmm. maybe. So like when the kids dust, they don't pick things up generally and dust underneath them. <laughs> yep. They dust around it, which for us, we're like, you know what? That's okay. Mm -hmm. About once a month. I think it's just more about the learning of the Exactly, learning task. what to do. And gradually we teach them like, hey, yeah. actually, if you could pick that thing up, that would be helpful. Or mm -hmm. can you dust the top of the TV and that kind of thing? Um, about once a month, Pat and I will go through and like divide dust and we'll dust it like Dude, un pick deep, up things yeah. or dust the books or whatever it may be um we're still trying to figure out how to dust legos that's a whole a lego set that's put yeah. together that's a whole nother thing but um and so it's not about nitpicking them it's about like this is the skill we're teaching you and then gradually you teach mm -hmm. them the other parts of it frankly some of the stuff i don't want them picking up <laughs> well and <laughs> too, i think it's just for them to understand what does it take to maintain a house exactly you know like that's the biggest thing as well so mm -hmm. Um, so we tend to, for some of those things that like, it, uh, it feels like it's better to lump things together sometimes. So we do on a Sunday afternoon, if we have a lot going on a Sunday, we'll do it on a Saturday. Um, but on a Sunday afternoon, we spend about an hour. Sometimes it's not even that long. Mm -hmm. Um, we spend about an hour and everyone in the family, we say like, this is our time to get our stuff done to get the house re reset for the week is reset kind of how we say week, it. Yeah. So that means people, we only, we only Hoover once a week unless something happens and we have to Hoover cause there's a mess, but we mm -hmm. Hoover, uh, Hoover Vacuum. the whole house and that's divided. Like you know, one kid does the one floor and then Zane does the other floors and daddy does the stairs, like kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I just called you daddy. It's okay. <laughs> Pat does the stairs. Um, and then, you know, for us right now, at least Jude and Zane, there's two bathrooms. One does one bathroom. The other does the other bathroom. Um, and then Veda mops all the floors. So she mm -hmm. comes through after everything has been swept and she mops all the floors um, that have any hard kind of space. They're all responsible for cleaning up their room every weekend, resetting their beds, mm -hmm. putting any way, any, we Pat, currently, Pat and I do the laundry, but then we fold their clothes and set them on their floors or their. Um, Plus, you, you do the laundry. I fold. <laughs> you fold. From time to time. And yeah. then we tell them they're responsible for putting their clothes away um, in a neat way, which. Because I, I would probably shrink everything and make things smaller. <laughs> That's right. We're gonna, you're going to learn. Yeah, um, exactly. It's a life skill. You yep, are going I need to, to learn this life skill. Um, and so that kind of thing. So all of this is happening. It may be um, we live in London and just windows and stuff like that are different things. So we usually have to wipe down the windows a little bit. So believe it or not, mold doesn't show up. I know people in the United States are like, mold. Oh, my gosh. You need to move out. It's just a normal thing here. Um, <laughs> we just live with it. We just live with it. Yeah. So there are things like that. Um that we all do and normally within it's we normally put on music zane will take his phone and he puts on music and moves it around the house wherever he and the other kids well, are usually puts his headphones he on now he's putting headphones <laughs> on um so we try to make it we're like all right great like let's get this done let's do it and get it done and then pat and i do like go through and check so some of these are like yeah i picked up my room and you go in their room and in particular maybe our youngest perhaps she likes to just shove everything in a pile in a corner we're like that's yeah. not picking up no one can sweep under that <laughs> Yep. and vacuum under that oh we still have some work with her yes we have some work to do <laughs> um and that kind of thing so but what it does is it, it it helps us start the week and all of us are like there's not all these things to do and we don't feel like it's all on our shoulders but it all just and again we're showing that family team thing and there's nothing better mm -hmm. than when you're all working on something together to see that family team thing in action um so those are that's kind and of then how I think we do Sunday that night usually things. after that's all done then it's it's we can just rest as a family, yeah, which is really fun. Chill or go on a walk yeah. or those kind of things. Um, and then it's just really nice. And, and so let's be honest, there's nothing better than a clean house and you feel like you actually can rest in it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for sure. And we do uh, something that is on our daily things that, um, 
isn't necessarily, I think we have it listed on there maybe, um, is that we tell the kids like the room, the major, the living spaces that all of us are in. So for us, we have currently, we have one room that like the kitchen, it's a big, it's an open plan. So the kitchen, the living room and the dining room are all in one room, big room. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of, we call it like a reset. So like the kids, you know, obviously they'll bring toys up there. They'll bring stuff to color or draw Mm -hmm. or whatever it is. The pillows are on the floor, blankets, blankets, all that stuff. And so we say like, okay, as everyone's doing their daily chores for the evening, such as like the dishes and sweeping and stuff, everyone reset the room too. go put your stuff back in your room, put Mm -hmm. the blankets in the basket, put the pillows on the sofa, things like that. And so it's just like it resets the room for the day as well. And then that's nice if we're having somebody over that evening or, you know, whatever it may be. It's I mean, they're not perfect at it, but for the most part, yeah, nor are we. (laughs) So I think, again, it's. It's, you know, giving everyone grace in it in a sense too. But, you know, re- being reminded if if these are some of the routines and the things that you set up, like hopefully everybody will get it and it won't be a big deal. Mm-hmm. So. And another one is um, taking, you know, for us, we have one day a week that the rubbish comes, mm, um, the rubbish yeah. pickup comes. And so the kid, one child goes around and picks up all the bins all over the house and brings them upstairs. We put them all into the bags and then Zane, because he can pick up most of the stuff compared to everybody else, takes everything out. Um, yeah. And that kind of thing. So even like you can divide responsibilities like that out um, mm-hmm. so that somebody has like there's two parts. So if you can figure a two part process, for instance, like the boys clean the bathrooms, Zane sweeps the bathroom floors and then Veda goes in and mops them. So yeah. like there are things you can divide out so then it seems more equal. But then also Veda's mopping because that's a little bit easier right now for her, mm-hmm. whereas just sweeping in general, she just sucks up things she shouldn't and stuff like that right yeah. now. Um, and so like vacuuming and stuff like that is not as easy. A broom for her is easy, yeah. but like actually for the most part. using a Hoover is not always the easiest for her. Yeah. Um, so divide it by age. So um, what do they, uh, in many ways, this is your decision. Um, obviously, all this is your decision, but what mm-hmm. do they quote unquote get yeah. for helping around the house so some people i know just say it doesn't matter you yeah, help around the house and that's how it is what we and should that's do fine what um, we should that's do. totally yeah. fine um some you know here they call it pocket money in the states they might call it allowance um whatever it may be of things and some people just give that but for us we um we have kind of the belief that we're trying to teach our kids like money doesn't just come to you when you Mm -hmm. come out of this house like you're going to have to work for it um and so you know you'll have to put some kind of effort in for it and so we call ours commissions basically if they haven't put in the work for the week and they are supposed to check things off yeah um as they've done them it's come to us now that we just know we, we're not questioning whether they've done them or not. Um, we yeah. can see them. I mean, and it. there are some weeks that they don't do it and they don't, they yeah, don't get paid. Exactly. So they have to do that stuff to get paid. Yeah. And when we say have to, um, they, they have to do the whole week of work to get paid. Yeah. Um, now there occasionally, of course, are always going to be exceptions to things. Somebody may have an after school thing, that they're not home in the evening. Um, that happens more with Zane sometimes. There may be, yeah. they may be at a sleepover. They, yeah, they I mean, might be. I mean, they're yeah, all, they're, just... they're sick. I mean, they're obviously, we're not like horrible. Yeah. Like, sorry, <laughs> you weren't here. You were at a sleepover. You were at a school event. No, sorry. Yep. You know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, sometimes we have friends over and they're, the kids, you know, we, they're obviously they don't need to stay up and do the dishes from us, but they'll do their dishes or that kind of thing. So there's obviously flexibility. Um, and sometimes we'll just say, you know, whoever's on, if somebody doesn't have something that night, they're like, hey, can you do the dishes tonight? And then tomorrow night, Zane will do them right. or that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously those things we do not take into account. But if for some reason we have had some weeks where one child in particular or somebody has said, like, I'm not doing anything, we're like, fine. Well, then. Yeah, you don't get paid. That's, that's, you don't have your money. Um, so then we do the, um, what we call again, commissions, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. We do by age. So, um, you know, Jude is 11. He gets 11 pounds um, for the week for his things. But he doesn't just get the 11 pounds right into I can go spend that. Right. Um, We divide it out. So here is how we divide it out. And I'll kind of explain. Um, We divide it out into percentages. So the first percentage is 25% of that 11 um, goes into what we call like big dream savings. Um, so once a quarter, we let the kids choose what they want to spend that money on. So 
I mean, frankly, in the place that we're at, it's either a video game or it's a toy. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else beyond that that it has been used for. Yeah. Um, I think a couple kids have bought books, actually. Um, sometimes uh, Zane just wants his deposited into his account, and then he just uses it for McDonald's out with yeah, his friends say, and he, stuff. He's so. just more food. Oriented, um, but so. they have to show, and and we do try. It usually changes within the quarter, saying like, "What do you want to save for?" So they might find a more expensive Lego set. And say I'm yeah, saving for exactly. that. Yeah. Um, often, though, by the time the end of the quarter comes, they've changed their mind and it's something else. But whatever. Um, and so, something we do that encourages them to, if we're out and you know we pop into the Lego store, they may see a set and we all, they we have this thing where we say we're not buying that. We'll take a picture of it, and then yeah. if you decide you want it, that's part of your dream saving. So that's mm-hmm. that twenty five percent of whatever they get. So twenty five percent of that eleven goes into the dream savings every single week when they get paid. Yeah. Um, 5% goes into impact. And this is like giving. Yeah. And so I know that doesn't seem like much, but it does. I mean, you know, obviously when you're <laughs> getting paid, you know, for Veda, like seven pounds, it's not much that goes in there, but we leave it there for a while. And then the kids get to choose where they give that. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jude has a school. This is a great example. Jude has yeah. a school trip coming up soon, an overnight thing for the week. And there are some kids who can't um, pay Before for the full it. trip. Yeah. And he came home and said, I want to use my impact money to put it towards that awesome yeah so it's cool because the kids like you know and zane's had the same thing where there's a fundraiser at school for um different you know things and stuff like that and he says oh i want to put it towards that and so our kids know it's sitting there and while Mm -hmm. it may not be it might just be 10 pounds it's still a big deal to them and so that is what that goes to and then 10 percent is what we call the vault so that Mm -hmm. is another type of savings but it's savings they are not allowed to touch ever (laughs) Mm -hmm. and again over the years, it will build up to be more and more. I feel mm-hmm. bad. Zane's maybe won't be as big because we've started this a little, <laughs> a little bit, later bit later than yeah. Veda's. Um, <laughs> our idea and our hope to do with it actually is that we'll put it into some kind of investment thing for them. Um, again, when I say this, we're talking about like maybe a pound a week, yeah, depending on where that, they are. Yeah. So it's not that much money, but we're trying to show them like there are things that you just keep. And then when they turn 18, we will release that money to them or just hand off the investment to them or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so that just stays. And then the rest that is left, um, we just call, we call it their mad money. <laughs> um, so this is like, it's you can name. spend it on what you want to spend it on. Yep. Um, so that. The, and it's handled differently. Zane has his own bank account because he's out in the city and doing things and stuff like that. And so I just deposit that right into his bank account and he knows it's there. Yep. He only gets what's in there and like he knows there's certain things he's responsible for. So yeah. if he wants to go to a movie with friends, it comes out of that. If he really wants some, I mean, it will depend on your child. You yeah. know, like Zane could care less about like the brands of his clothing and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, but if that just... were the case and he was like, I want this high end brand, like we might pay for a portion and he'd have to pay for the rest. Yeah. I mean, there are just different things like that um, that he knows. Like, obviously, like we provide food at home. If you're choosing to constantly eat out and stop well, and get stuff on the way home from school and things like that, yeah. that comes out of that money. Yeah, again, like there's certain nights where he's like, I don't necessarily want to eat that for dinner. And, and so we're like, go. okay, well, you're either going to make something with what we have at home for yourself or, you know, you can you can choose to get something on the way home from school. The fun so. thing that we've seen, because um, Zane does have his own account and stuff like that, is that he'll come home sometimes and he'll brought his brother and sister like yeah. a Sprite or something that's like that. Right. And like, that's really cool to see him then, you know, and we're like, you don't have to use your money for that. He's like, I want to though. Yeah. Um. So that's what happens with that. With the other two, um, and then when it comes to like Zane's savings and stuff like that, his bank account right now doesn't have like a savings account. That's something we're going to get set up. So all of that stuff is kind of run through our accounts and we have put stuff into savings for them. And yeah. I just have a little, I have a little chart that shows me how much they have in it and that kind of thing. And so for the other two, for the two younger ones, they don't have bank accounts yet. Yeah, um, you just... have to be a certain age here, I think, to get that. Um, and so we just kind of, quote unquote, have keep, their keep bank accounts with yeah. us. And so they will, on, you know, say, how much money do I have in my money and stuff like that um, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And then they can see. And even with that, they do save it. Uh, I should say most of the time they will save it. So I like Veda has like 42 pounds right now because she hasn't spent it. But she's like, oh, I'm saving because she wants this Lego set that's like 60 pounds. So she's not using her drum- dream money for it. She's using her mad money, but she's saving over her, yeah, months yeah. and months to get this Lego set. Yeah. And the reason why we chose to do it this way, um, we're trying to teach them how to handle money. It's a very small amount of money, but we're still we're trying simpli- to teach them. We're trying to simplify it. We're trying to simplify yeah. it. We're trying to show them how like, 
you know, you want to give, you want to give your money, you want to have, say, you know, you, you want, you want to save, save in different ways. You need to yeah. save for an emergency. That's that vault type of thing. Mm -hmm. But you also want to save for things when you want to do something. Um, yeah. We, again, this is just us. You guys have heard our debt story. If not, I forget which episode it is, but go back and find it. Yeah. Um, that we don't believe in debt. And so when the kids are like, can I borrow money? Cause I want this toy and I just need five more pounds. We say, no, I'm sorry. You're going to have to wait till you have that. Yeah. Like, and that's hard as a parent to say that. Mm -hmm. Um, but we say, sorry, you need to wait till you save that amount to spend it. You don't, you actually do not have that amount of money. Um, yeah. and so that's some of the things that we are trying to teach them and that kind of thing. Um, and again, when it goes back to the amount of the different, you know, that's... family help that they have, Zane has more stuff on his list than the other ones do. He's getting paid more. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not true. a significant amount more, but mm -hmm. he knows it. And the first time we posted this, that Jude was like, Why do I have more than Veda? And Zane was like, Why do I have more than Jude? And we explained, like, you are getting paid more age appropriately. Yeah, exactly. And so with that becomes a bit more responsibility. It's not over the top. Like I would no. not suggest doing that. It's just a couple more things mm -hmm. on the list. Um, or he may have dishes more than a certain time of, you know the yeah. others and things like that how do we feel like it's been working yeah i mean i think this this i think the biggest thing for for our kids what that has worked is being able to say these are the specific things you're doing today you know being very clear about their responsibilities has has really helped rather than saying these are the responsibilities of the day someone do go that. and do it <laughs> Um, and so I think helping them understand their roles and their responsibilities has 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 completely changed and helped um, the success of of what this looks like for us. Um, and again, you know, all of this is you know you can take it and tweak it and do whatever you need to do that's going to work best for your house um, and whatever you feel is going to work for your kids or your roommates and you know whatever it is. You know, I think. That's the biggest key, I think, because I think you had heard this on a podcast or something like that, and and so we tweaked it to what what we felt was going to work for our house, and and again, it's not perfect, but I think, I think for the most part, it it we've gotten to a point where it's like, okay, everybody, you know, what's on your what's your what's on your list tonight, and it's really simple, and they just go and they look at it, and then they they kind of take care of it, and it's. There's doesn't not, mean they don't complain. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> but it's not as much as it was. It, no, actually, you know, I think, complaining you know, has gone way the down. complaining has definitely gone down. And it's just like, okay, cool. You know, I'll go do that. I'll do this. Um, a lot of times I feel like it tends to, at least with one of our kids, like they're wanting to do it sooner than everyone else. And sometimes things need to happen in a certain order. <laughs> Yeah. Um, things like that. Well, I think, but I think too, we've seen just... initiative in them too. So yeah, they know that true. that Sunday afternoon yeah. is when we do things. So sometimes, yeah. you know, for instance, if Pat and I are at church and we have to stay a little bit longer because we're chatting, the mm -hmm. boys of the past couple of weekends said, can we go home and start our yeah. stuff for Sunday afternoon? And we're like, sure. And we came home and like the bathrooms were clean. They had hoovered yeah. the bottom floor. They had done all their stuff. So then the rest of us just had whatever we had left. Um, yes, and so we're great. at the point now that like they can do that stuff on their own too. So, mm -hmm. um, so just to recap a little bit again, like if you're trying to figure out how to get your kids to help around the house and to become a family team, and that's what it's about, um, is to have the, have the responsibility is divided and things like that. Um, come up. I mean, the first thing you have to do is figure out like what needs done. Yeah, in the what house. are the things? Yeah. Um, things that we don't have on here because we do not have a garden that we need to mow the lawn yeah, or, yeah. you know, there's so many things that we don't have on here again. So it's going to be specific to your unique situation and living mm -hmm. situation and stuff like that. So, um, and time restraints and time and restraints. All, you know, all yeah, that exactly. Stuff. Um, and that is something if you know, like, um, you know, if you know during a certain season, this child is going to have practice on this night, don't put them on the things that night. Shift mm -hmm. it to a different night and you can change it each quarter and season and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like you're not saying this is set in stone, ebb and flow and you'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, so figure out the things that need to be done around the house and then divide that up through your kids. We highly recommend doing it by each day um because that just that gets rid of the arguments and stuff of who's on what and that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and then again whatever you want to call it allowance pocket money whatever we mm -hmm. call it if that's if that's what you want to do if that's something you want to do you may say it doesn't matter like this is just what we do yeah um, but we do those things by their age so they get paid in the amount of how old they are 
And then we divide it into 25% goes into like a big dream savings, which Mm -hmm. they get to spend once a quarter. 5% is in impact. They can choose to give that whenever they want to into whatever cause they decide they want to give it to. Mm -hmm. Um, 10% is in a vault savings. They don't ever get to touch touch it. it. They won't see it till they're 18. Um, And the rest is their spending money that they can spend however they want to. They can choose to, you know, say, I will say when I say however they want to. Um, yeah, they're, they're with art. our little ones, especially, they see something, and you know how it is. I want this thing, and you know we have the pa- pound land here, or in the states, it would be the dollar store. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that is going to break in two days. And so yeah. we have a rule that even though you have this money, spending money, again, we're trying to teach them not to have the impulse buy. Um, you have to wait 48 hours before it was 24. We changed it to 48 because that's mm-hmm. what we're doing for ourselves. You have to wait 48 hours before you actually purchase the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially in the day and age of Amazon, they can go on and they can see something and they want to grab it and they're like, buy now, buy now, grab it, mom. And I'm like, mm-hmm. nope. We're going to wait 48 hours. And I will say almost 85% of the time they've changed their mind. Or just forgot about it. Or they forgot about it and they don't actually want that thing. So especially if you're trying, like, we don't have that much space. We're trying to keep clutter out. Sometimes we tell them if you're going to grab that thing, then something in your room is going to have to go to charity um, and that kind of thing and be given to someone else. And so if you're worried that like, oh, now they're just going to spend it on junk. I mean, sometimes they do. Our kids have learned. Yeah. Sometimes yep. after 48 hours, they have said, I still want that thing. And, and they buy it, it and, it and then they have the toy for a week and it breaks. And we're like, well. Not, not even a week. <laughs> that's a learning lesson. Yeah. So. I mean, I, that's just part of it. Or Zane mm-hmm. has said, I'm out of money and my friends are going to go to McDonald's. And we're like, sorry, what did you spend your money on? He's like, well, I stopped every day and got uh, like a Sprite and a bag of crisp on the way home from school. And we're like, you have a snack here. Like you didn't need to do that. So again, mm-hmm. he has learned on that as well. Um, yeah. And that is, that's part of it. That's all part of We're trying to help them learn before they leave this house. It won't be perfect, of course, but at least help Mm -hmm. them learn some lessons on what it's like spending money, what it's like saving money, Mm -hmm. like that kind of thing. So, but it also showing them that like money just doesn't, unfortunately, grow on trees. (laughs) Yeah. Takes some effort and work to get that too. So, yeah. So we would love to hear from you guys. Um, Again, these ideas and this stuff has been pulled from lots of different places um, of putting this together to figure out what worked for our family. And so we'd love to hear from you of... What works for you guys? Um, I know somebody, when we had posted about this, said like their mom used to call their Sunday afternoon clean for their family, like the hour of power, which I love, Um, and that kind of thing. So we'd love to hear from you guys or questions you have further on this too. But we hope that this is somewhat helpful if you're trying to figure out how to get your kids to help around the house. Again, age appropriately um, and that kind of thing. You know, it's okay for the older kids to have more responsibility. And the younger ones, like I said, when Veda was a toddler, she's always loved mopping. So actually that's always been her thing. Yeah. And she could do that when she was a toddler with a little bit of help, definitely. Of course. Um, so yeah, we hope it's helpful and um, that you guys can take some into this to your family to be more of a family team. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of the Laurent Collective Podcast you enjoyed today's podcast be sure to subscribe and leave a review which helps others find our podcast continue the conversation with us over on instagram at laurent collective we look forward to going deeper than just surface talk with you again next week